Hello, welcome back. It is me, Candace, returned to bring you Hello Humlock, New Brunswick edition, where we will be discussing Riel Nason's The Town That Drowned. Intro time. Riel Nason's The Town That Drowned. This was published in 2011 by Goose Lane Editions, and it tells the story of Ruby, who lives in the fictionalized town of Haventon, New Brunswick, along the St. John River. Ruby is attending a skating party with her church, I think, or just various community members, and she falls through the ice. And when she falls through the ice and kind of passes out, she has a vision, a vision of her town submerged by water. And when she's hauled back out of the ice, she tells everyone what she saw and everyone thinks that she's kind of gone a little crazy off the deep end and she becomes ostracized and kind of made fun of for having these visions of her town being underwater. That is until the surveyors start coming and the whole town finds out that a massive hydroelectric dam is being built downriver from them and when the dam is completed their entire town will be submerged underwater. So even though Haventon is fictionalized the details of the story are true in the respect that the Mactuac Dam is a real dam that was built in the 1960s and it greatly affected a lot of the people who lived along the river, especially the ones who lived along the river um, close by where the dam is being built. The water level was raised dramatically with the building of the head pond. People had to move their homes or they had to bulldoze their homes down and go somewhere else. And um, for a small tight-knit community and people that have lived on that land, it was a big change, a big shock, and not everyone was happy about it, as you can imagine. So the story was really sweet. I liked it a lot. It feels a very Canadian story. I think being Canadian, like, we have a relatively small population in relation to our land mass, which is huge, and so, I mean, people have this sense of Canada as being very nature specific and, and kind of related to the land. And I find a lot of stories can sort of relate that character development to the land in parallels. And in this case, it's a coming of age story as Ruby is sort of growing up and entering the adult world and her growing up and her changing is paralleled by the changes in the land that will be um, coming to pass with the building of the dam. You know, when you grow up and you leave your childish perspective behind and you enter the adult world, Ruby is really um, kind of having a front row seat into a lot of what's happening in her community. She is discovering um, things about the people who live around her, things that she maybe didn't notice or wasn't aware of when she was younger, but now that she's becoming older and more mature, she's seeing the things around her um, and the people around her with a more nuanced perspective. And I think almost everyone finds when they reach a certain level of maturity that there's a point of no return. You can't get your innocence back after those changes have come and after your perspective has shifted. And so I think that's really apt in kind of the metaphor or the use of the dam as a parallel because um, the, the nature of the river is being altered forever. Even if you remove the dam, the, the river won't go back to the way it was or it would take quite a long time for, for that to happen. So there's some other things going on in the story as well. Uh, Percy, who is Ruby's younger brother, he seems to be somewhere on the autistic spectrum. It's, it's never explicitly stated, but he's, he's very intelligent, very methodical. He likes his routine and he gets upset quite easily when things are um, changed or when unexpected things happen. Even though Percy is kind of a bit of an outsider in the town and, and the townsfolk don't necessarily really understand his uh, personality quirks and his idiosyncratic behaviors, in some ways Percy really seems figured as that rural New Brunswick mindset and that rural New Brunswick life of a small town people set in their ways, people who have been doing the same thing for generations and who are resistant to change or resistant to things around them happening differently than how that they had always been done. And so I think that's really interesting to think about because the dam being built is altering many people's lives and, and they are as upset and resistant to the changes as Percy is 
even though it's understandable because their houses are being either flooded or moved and, and that sort of thing. I would have liked the prophetic aspects of the book to be a little bit played up more where Ruby has this vision of her town underwater and it does kind of return through the story but at the same time I didn't feel like it was uh, given a central role as it might have been interesting to have. I feel like you could have even taken that part out of the story and the story still could have been told and um, progressed in a similar fashion. So um, that's a small gripe, like I just liked that aspect of the story and it would have been interesting if it was just delved into it a little bit further. But otherwise, I found this story really sweet. It is a coming of age story, it's a small town, Canadian life, and it's not usually the kind of story that I read or pick for myself. But I was really interested in having a maritime book on Hello Hemlock and I had wanted to read this one for a while because it takes place in New Brunswick and because a lot of people that I know really liked it. Interestingly enough, even though the town of Haventon is fictional, the real town of Jewett's Mills was actually submerged with the building of the dam. So I found some online sort of repositories of photos of Jewett's Mills and also the dam being built before and after. So I will link some of those below if you're interested. You can have a look and kind of get a sense for the visuals of where this book takes place. Also, living in New Brunswick quite close to where the dam was built, I decided to take a drive out there and show everyone what it looks like um, just because it seemed a good opportunity to take us on a little Hello Hemlock road trip and I will insert that footage here. Okay, Hello Hemlock field trip today. I'm gonna to take us to go and see the dam, the actual Mactaquack Dam, so let's go. So we're here. I took some footage of driving across the dam because it also acts as a bridge. There's a road. It's kind of bumpy. Apologies for that. But I'm at a lookout point. The trees have kind of grown up, so I'm not sure how much we'll see. But let's get out of the car and look out over the dam. So here we are at the dam. You can see the difference in the water level. There's lots of trees there, so the view is not um, what we would wish it to be, perhaps. But um, I'm at a little kind of lookout place. There's always people here. It's like 9.30 in the morning, and there were still some people here. But um, they went away, I think, or else I can't see them. So hopefully they're not listening to me vlog right now. Um, yeah, the head pond that was made from the dam, I mean, there's lots of campgrounds. There's people with summer homes. There's um, people boating on it all the time and then there's also talk about getting rid of the dam and um, people that didn't want the river to be dammed in the first place and um, I don't know enough about ecology or the world to um, to know what would happen like can you just take a dam away what would happen down river up river have it been submerged for so long um, the salmon and fish that typically go upriver to spawn are actually collected in trucks and driven upriver and then let loose. So they still they try, they try to maintain um, things like that, but obviously it's not it's not natural. So um, yet the hydroelectric power is something that we make lots of use of. So I don't I don't know I don't know what the answer is, but it definitely changed a lot of people's lives when the dam was built. They put this bench here, presumably to enjoy the view of a hydroelectric dam, and then the trees all grew up. I think the view of the trees is probably kind of nicer than the dam, but it does sort of defeat the purpose of putting a bench right here. Anyway. 
that is it for me. Jason is up next. It's just the two of us this month talking about this book. Uh, he said that he's been enjoying it, but I don't know particularly his thoughts. So I'm interested to see what he thinks about it. And also if any of you have read it, I would really like to know what you think. I will be back again next month as well. So I hope you're not sick of seeing me on Hello Homework and I will talk to you all very soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.